Hello there folks, Gary Bradley here from Creative Frontiers and in this video we're going to create a atmospheric neon effect with some editable text floating above the water with a reflection of that rippled into the water underneath and then we're going to have some kind of lighting casting across the surface of the water once we've done. Now most of this work will be done in the layers panel so I'm going to click and drag and pull that out here and this image really is a kind of a it's kind of past sunset in here going towards kind of a twilight but it's not really dark enough so first off we need to help the image by darkening it down and to do that non-destructively I'll go to the adjustments panel middle row far right hand side and apply what's called a color lookup and this literally is when I click on it and the options are revealed in the properties panel a list of different looks for your image now when you hover over them they don't update a preview of your image unfortunately but the one that we need in here amongst all the other options is called night from day and if I left click on that well that's essentially what it gives us so it works really well it will really help emphasize the lighting effect to make it stand out from the darkness of the background of the image now because it's an adjustment layer you can turn it off in terms of visibility completely you can turn it back on again you can even click on the opacity and you could lower that and adjust it as required so again all the tutorials that I will show you on this channel anywhere around teaching I always try and get people to add more content to the layers panel because yes it creates more complexity in the layers panel but you'll definitely need more flexibility because Photoshop can be very unforgiving at times so with that done then uh, I'm happy with that for now I will then go and pick up my type tool and create some text so I'm gonna hover over this part of the image and then click and drag and create a text frame it's probably a little bit bigger than what I need in the newer versions of Photoshop it will put Laura Mipsum into there and um, we get something uh, I need to alter it of course and to do that well I am going to go and open up from the window menu uh, in here the character panel now that pops up here uh, in a separate pop-up along with its best buddy the paragraph panel so I'm going to right click on there and choose close I don't need that one and I'm just going to replace the characters in there so uh, just making sure I am active inside the text frame and then command and A to select all those characters or control A on a PC and then I can type in um, dead calm so I've put that kind of each um, word as a capital inside of there but I do want them all as capital so I can swipe over that go down to the bottom of the character panel and change that to all caps and if I just move this closer to my text so we're not having to play eye tennis on screen I'm going to change this to a different font so I'm going to choose from my recent fonts in here fill some soft this is a tight kit font which has recently been uh, rebranded and called Adobe fonts now and if I click on that I need to make that bigger so I'm going to go and swipe over that and type in 45 press return to update that gives us a nice very slim consistently kind of weighted uh, font in there which will really help with the kind of neon effect and then in terms of the gaps between these characters that they are all highlighted so I can choose the tracking value in here and change that to say 450 press return and space them out considerably just to add a little bit more impact with that done uh, my text is colored white in there I'm fairly happy with that I can go to the options bar at the top and click on the tick and then I can close down the character panel I'm going to switch to the move tool and then just kind of roughly move this into position I want this to look like it ultimately it's floating about a foot or so above the water in uh, in real world terms of course and then the reflection will help with that because at the moment it just looks like text over an image so from here then I will go to my layers panel make sure that my tight layer is active inside of here I will then go down to effects but before that do just want to point out um, that if you view your artwork at 100% when you're applying layer effects it could be 100% or higher but if you're zoomed out further than 100% from your image it's likely that you might not see the true impression of your effects inside of Photoshop so there's absolutely nothing wrong with going to 200 or higher but it needs to be at least 100 in there then uh, I'll click on effects go down the list and choose how to glow it will then uh, preview whatever I clicked on in here last so I will then click on reset to default at the bottom in there notice that it turns on the tick to apply the edit it then highlights outer glow in here and then puts the edits for that on the right hand side so uh, from here I will first of all for most of these layer styles I tend to increase the opacity quite high so I can see it nice and clearly I will at some point reduce that afterwards but it's just to see it nice and clearly and then the other thing I'll tend to do is increase the size 
So you can see in here, when the size is set very, very low, you will get a very precisely matching glow around your characters in this case, if it's a type layer. But if I increase that, then the, the glow itself will expand and it will soften around its edges. So if I increase that, say in here, 46 PX is for pixels. I can then show you some of the other, other options in there. So we've got noise. If I click and drag and increase noise, that will literally put a grainy artifact around all the area that is glowing around the content in the layer. And in this case, obviously it's our text. So if that's the kind of thing you want to go for, then great. I don't in this case. It can, however, noise be used to create the impression of spray paints. If you want to create kind of a graffiti effect, noise will help contribute to that. So uh, in this case, it's not graffiti, it's neon. So I'm going to set that back down to zero. And then we'll come to uh, the color in here. You could add um, a, a slightly different color if you wanted to. I'm going to stick with white in here. Um, and then you'll notice that it, we've got a, a kind of a gradient preview. So um, the glow starts off as white. It fades out into transparency, which is what we want. So we want light to fade out. It's a kind of way naturally works so that's good um underneath for element then we've already seen size if i make the size bigger it uh, it expands the region beyond where the characters are and it fades it out becomes softer you can fill that region out so if i increase the spread the spread will fill out that kind of soft fall off area so the glow will always start out 100 around where the characters are and then it will then soften and disappear but spread will fill that region out. So if your size is set very big, then your spread in here will fill that out as well. So if I reduce the spread in here, you will notice that we get a softer transition away from the edges of our text in there like so. Now, this is way too big. I want to reduce the size in there. I'm going to go down. And again, the, the, the size and the quality of your image will have an impact on the amounts you put inside of here. So a kind of a screen graphic, you might find it doesn't need quite so high of values. A large print file, you'll tend to find that the sizes will have to adjust. So you'll probably find that you have to alter these settings on an image by image basis. From here, um, probably the size is a little bit big. Um, go down to about there. I'm fine. I'm happy with that, actually. Um, and then finally, I'll go up to opacity. Just drop the opacity back in there. So I've got that glow going around those characters. I'm happy with that. Of course, I can come back in here at any time and, and, and tweak it. Um, and with that done, then I'm, I'm fine. I'm good with that. I will then go to OK, click on there. That applies it as a layer style. It's added underneath. You can turn it off at any time. Turn it back on again by clicking the space next to the word uh, outer glow. And you can double left click on the word outer glow to go back in there to those very same options and tweak them afterwards. So. I'm good with that. I'm going to take my cursor, just make the layers panel a little bit taller, and then I'm going to create a copy of that text layer, dragging my cursor onto the new symbol in there to create a copy. And then my original one, I'm going to leave at the top. I'm going to actually color code it as well um, because I love to color code layers. What can I say? It offers no value other than just to signpost what's in that layer. So green now, I'm going to have oh, actually let's be really indecisive and go yellow because that's where the colors the light light for yellow see where i'm going with this i'm going to collapse that that's going to be my original neon layer and then the one that's going to be the reflection in here i'm going to color code that different i'm going to go for say uh, say a blue in here so i now can try and avoid doing the thing that i shouldn't do which is to click on the wrong text layer so i'm going to now treat this as the reflection text in the water now to do that we're going to apply some edits that are destructive so i need to protect this second text layer so i'm going to right click on it uh, on the layer name that is in the layers panel and then choose convert to smart object you will see that the, the kind of the glow disappears and things it is in there and all that a, a smart object will do is it will i say one or more layers in the layer stack and then protect them and this essentially is the uh, the representation of that layer you can edit it by double left clicking on it which we will do but that is now protected. So if I go to the edit menu and then come down the list and choose free transform, I get the options across the top of the screen. I get my transform box. If I just hold on the space bar and pan, I can right click on that transform box over the image window and then choose uh, flip vertical. That will give me my reflected look. I will then obviously have to hover my cursor over that transform box, drag. If I just drag around, I can move it left and right and up and down. But if I hold down the shift key, it will lock that text to just moving up and down in there. And I want to as I say, can it make this feel like it's, it's floating at least about a foot off the surface of the water zone? And a reasonable gap between the two. Let go of the mouse, let go of the shift key. 
and then I can hit the return key on the keyboard or you can click on the tick in the options bar to apply the edit in there. So we've now got a reflected version of that text in there. Um, notice that when you turn your layer into a smart object, it removes the color. So if you were worried about that not being blue, you can right click on the eyeball and we can change it back to blue. All is good. Excellent. Now, we need to apply some destructive edits. Well, they would normally be, but we now have protected this layer. So let me show you how tricky it can be to apply the ripple filter. So that's my um, my layering that's gonna be the reflection. In fact, I'm gonna name that reflection, just so I don't get confused. And then I'll go to the filter menu, go down the list to distort and then choose ripple. So this will give us a kind of a rippling effect over our text. You will not get a preview of the image window, it's sad to say, um, the only preview you get inside of it here. So it will only show the data that's in that layer, which is text with the glow on it. So we've got a transparent background. It's tough to see this effect. I mean, you can drag the amount slide around. You can see more or less of that effect in there. What we really need to do is see that text on the dark background. So my suggestion is the following. Click OK and just apply that effect inside of there like so. We get that ripple effect. Um, if you like it, great. If not, then this is how I would approach it. This is a smart object. So what I can do is hover my cursor over the thumbnail for that smart object layer and double left click. And in fact, just to back that up, notice with this layer active down here, you can see that it reads edit contents as well. So the properties panel will allow you to do the same thing. I'm gonna hover my cursor over there and double left click. It looks like we've just opened up a new document, which is our existing document, should I say, because we have content in here. Again, we have a tab at the top, so it does feel like a different document. It's not. It's just temporarily opened up the contents of that smart object, which was just our text layer. So you can see in here, it reads dead calm, what we typed in there, and then we got the effect implied to it. That's all good. But what we will do is I'm going to go to select and choose all, and then uh, that will put a selection around the whole of the canvas. Go down to the bottom and click on uh, a new adjustment layer, which is going to be solid. Now, the last color I used in here was black, so that's good. Click down at the bottom in here in the uh, in the brightness field. So I've got my hue strip in here, and you've got saturation up at the top right-hand side. You can click in there, you can change the colors. But if you want to go for something really dark, dark without any saturation to it, then right down at the bottom, you've got black, which has an RGB value of 000, if you didn't know, and then click OK. That, of course, completely hides the text, but if I drag that underneath, we now see the text nice and clearly against a dark background, but then you're saying, well, but how does that work? There's no ripple on it and we it's not on the image anymore. You'd be absolutely right. But if you know this ridiculous um, option in here to arrange and then split the view of those two artworks horizontally, we get this. If I hover my cursor over the dividing line between those, I've got my original artwork lower down. And then if I just in here, and no, I've just zoomed away from that, hover my cursor and grab this. It can be a bit twitchy about dragging and pulling that window up. Zoom out of this one a little bit so we can see all of that text in there. So this is my smart object that we've just been editing, put the black background in. If now I go to file, again, hugely confusing, and choose save, it saves that. And it puts, lo and behold, a, um, a black background in the text. So if I click on the tab for this file, hold down the space bar to pan, and then zoom in inside of there, what I can do now is that's my smart object. That is the thing that I'm editing in the top window the contents of it. If I now go down to Ripple, I can double click on Ripple. I can then um, tweak this so I can see a nice clear background in there. In terms of Ripple, well, as it suggests, you can try and create ripples. You can create small ripples in here with lots of agitation, um, like so. So it'll start off in the middle at zero. You can uh, change the, uh, the kind of the ripple effect in one direction by dragging and putting a negative value in there. You can drag towards the right hand side and put a positive percentage in there. Um, so you have those kind of options. Um, so you either go small, medium, or large in there. And for uh, when clearly large is too big. So um, for this one, I am going to go um, for medium in there, I think. And then just reduce the amount of touch in there. So we want some ripples. I'm just trying to look at the shape of the water that's in there. We do want to ripple it. I don't want to distort it too much so go for that kind of effect for now and then when I'm happy with that I'll click OK so that's the effect that we applied in this main document to the text you'll see it there it's ripple now if I go back to the 
uh, smart object, the contents of that, I can now hide, don't have to delete, I can hide that back black background and then go to file and choose save to save that layer. And then it disappears. So it's kind of a neat workaround to filters that are tricky to, to spot, um, turn it to a smart to object layer and then we can tweak. So from here then, um, I think I'm fairly happy with that. Just looking at that against the, the background of the water in there, I might go a little bit more with the ripple in there. So, in fact, I can actually just click on the tab in here, turn on the black, save that, click back on here, on this file, in this window, and then double click a ripple, and then just ripple that a little bit more in there, like so. Yeah, and then click OK. So, I'll go back to this one. Uh, hide the layer in there, save that, so file, and then choose save. And I think for now, I'm done tinkering around from one thing to another. I'll click on X in there to close down the layer in there, like so. And then final things then really are, we want to fade out this text at the bottom. So this being a smart object now, you can still add a layer um, mask to that. So I'm gonna click on here on the uh, little arrow to hide the filters temporarily, because it gets too confusing. And then with that layer active, I'll go down to the bottom to click on add a mask, which is always shown as a square with a circle inside of it. So that puts, it's got a layer mask in there. It will all be white at first. So therefore white reveals anything that's white in here will reveal whatever's in this layer, which is all of our rippled text. If I was to paint black in that thumbnail, it would conceal what's in this and only layer in here, which is the ripple text. So um, bear in mind, black conceals, white reveals in a layer mask. So I then need to pick up a painting tool and zoom in to my characters in here. And then I need to pick up my brush tool. So pick up my brush tool here and then go to the brush tip menu at the top. And I can see a preview of how big that brush is. Probably need to go a little bit bigger to start off with in there. Yeah, I just want to be able to just fade off the top of these characters in here as they move further and further away from the regional kind of glowing letters in there. So I'm happy with that. No hardness on there. It's just starting off with a soft round brush as well. So 175 pixels for this. Press return. Do make sure, of course, that I go down to the bottom of the tools panel and out of those two colors in there, I need to make sure that I am painting with black so I can swap those around. Paint with the top left color, which is always the foreground color, which is black. And then make sure the opacity, the strength of what I'm going to paint with each stroke of this brush is set really, really low. So that 6% here is plenty. Um, and across there, I will then click and drag and click and drag. If you find that it's not having the effect you want, you can go a bit higher. So in there, I could click it. There we go. It's just fading the top of those characters away. So we want to create the effect that at some point, that text is too far away from the original kind of neon sign floating over the water and it just disappears um, as it would do in, in, in kind of real life in there. It fades further away from the original source, the light fades a touch inside of there. So just fading this out. Every time I click and drag and let go in the mouse and then I click and drag again in there. So it's just side to side just to fade those out. Um, that is a solid white at the moment. Um, it will help then if that original layer, if I click on the image thumbnail, I'm going to change the blending mode in here, which changes the way that the transparency works of the white here with the background. I'm going to change that to what is called um, screen or lighten in there. Screen in there will uh, essentially make anything that's dark invisible. White then will overlay over what's in the background. We, we should at some point, if I was to just make this translucent here, be able to get kind of a variation of that, that reflection in the water in there. So it, it gives a little bit more variation. That's not just solid white, by changing the blend mode of this text to screen, we're allowing them to have some kind of transparency and interact with the, with the water in the background. With that done then, um, probably need to fade that layer a little bit in there for the reflection, just to knock that back a bit. Uh, zoom out in there. And um, we've got our reflection kind of working in here. It might be a little bit strong still, so I might just back that off a little bit in there. That's looking a little bit better now we need to make the surface of the water light up. So this will have to be done with an adjustment layer again. So if I press return to make that pop-up disappear, I'm gonna click on the adjustment layer that we used to create the image, um, the, uh, the the color look up to make the image look darker. And then go back to the adjustments panel. I want to go to here into the adjustments panel and then choose uh, curves from there. That adds curves. What I need to do then is want to brighten this image up. So I want to brighten it up 
and then create the to, to, to ultimately create the effect of the the water underneath that sign being lit up so i'm actually just going to go and pick up my target adjustment tool here just like so hover my cursor over the image uh around about i'll say about here over the water and then click and hold down the mouse keep it held down drag upwards and really brighten this up i mean really brighten this up it obviously will not look the way we want it to but this is just an effect so maybe is a little bit too much just about there so yeah happy with that for now notice that is added into a new adjustment layer called curves again the layer mask that it comes with is all white so therefore everything is revealed we don't want that so if i click in the layer mask to make sure it's active i think and go down to the properties panel and this time choose invert and it will hide all of that adjustment i can then choose to paint back in that adjustment wherever i want so making sure the adjustment layer for curves in there is active just with a left click in there you get little, tiny little brackets around that thumbnail i can then go back to my brush in there change the foreground color to white to reveal and then probably need to increase the size of my brush in here quite considerably so yep yeah, that's going to be plenty press return i do want to drop this down really low in here uh, so we'll set around about 10 percent as a starting point and then um i will paint so i'll click across there like so and just want to create the effect of that sign lighting up the water in that region so i'm just click and drag click and drag across there like so and then i will just drop the size of the brush again in here like so press return to make the pop disappear click across there i want to make the water underneath where that sign is really kind of lighten up in there so we're trying to create this effect of the water lightening up in front of the sign in there in that region a uh, little bit more underneath in there like so just brighten up that region and around here as well not to miss the d out in there so it is it's, it can be a little bit time consuming this bit because we're trying to create a kind of a subtle effect in there so with that lit up there looking a little bit better that's kind of our general light uh, might add a little bit of touch of that over here as well and uh, again in terms of changing that blend mode it might be handy to change the blend mode again to maybe lighten or you could choose screen in there again that can help so i might actually go for screen inside of there just to help that look uh, a little bit more convincing then what we need to do is add a second curves adjustment we want a general lighting effect for where the characters are and uh, lighting the water in front we also then need to create a really bright effect just underneath where the sign is as well where it would be at its brightest the reflection so again i'm going to go down i've got my curves adjustment active here i'm going to go up to the adjustments layer click on to add another curve in there and then do the same kind of thing i'm going to pick up my target adjustment tool and then click over the image in there and just brighten things up quite a bit in there like so and again i don't need that adjustment over everything so i can left click on the layer mask go back to properties choose invert inside of there with my layer mask active inside of there i'm going to change the name of these so i'm going to call that um large and then uh, double click on the new one in there and call that um short so that i've got a short glow underneath uh, on the water in there with that one so i'm going to zoom in nice and close for this one and then the brush tool this time i'm going to make a lot smaller so much smaller in here hover over there and just to preview like so probably a little bit too small uh, with that done i'm happy with that keep the opacity set quite low again make sure i'm painting with white and then drag across that region there just to brighten that the region just underneath where the characters are it will be at its absolute brightest um, again i'm going to change the blending mode in here to um i'm going to choose let's have a look lighten this time yeah i'll go for lighten and again underneath each of these characters just a several click and drag of the mouse just to reveal that really bright curves adjustment in there like so just adding those in there so we want a little pop of color underneath each of these characters and every click and drag with the mouse is just brightening that region up in there and you could, of course you could spend a lot more time tweaking the appearance of this going forward but um if you felt you'd done too much you've gone too far you could always switch the color and paint with black to, to hide this effect if you wanted to you have to paint in the layer mask of course um and tweak that can you hear the flurries of clicking on my mouse 
So with that done, I will then zoom out, go to fit on screen. Uh, and, and there we have it. We have our neon effect, our atmospheric, atmospheric effect of our text hovering over the water. We have our uh, re reflected text that we turn into a smart object. We got that reflected in the water in there. And then we've got our water effect where we lit the water up with that very short, very focused adjustment under curves. And then we've got the larger one which runs across the surface of the water in front. For either one of those, you could click on them and change the opacity value, lowering it, increase it inside of there uh, and decrease it. But you have that flexibility. So more content in the layers panel um, gives you that flexibility. But that, folks, is how we can create a neon effect, an atmospheric effect of your images. Thanks for watching. And if you want to see more videos in the future, do hit the subscribe button on the channel page and, uh, and hit the bell as well so that every time a new video is added, you'll be notified and you don't miss any of the Photoshop goodness in the future. Take care, folks, for now, and I'll see you in the next video.